Time to see who's with Reese. Oh, yeah. Wendy Williams is in here. How you doing? You know who is the top five dead or alive D block general Jada Kiss right now with my cousin Big Reese, baby. Check it out, y'all. What it looked like it's your main man, Fabulous Man. I'm holding it down with Reese. My brother, Reese. Reese, me. The homie Reese, you already know, man. It's Taylor Gang. I die. Oh. It. Let's go ahead and start this thing off the right way. Hit this hype bell, man. We live, of course, on Reese Radio. Affiliation with Magic 1075, 975, Real Sound of Atlanta. Catch us on the weekends. Of course, this interview is going to be up there. And shout out to everybody that's looking live on our Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, wherever you're watching. We appreciate you. We got a goat in the building. One of the guys that's been indebted into the industry, like woven in the, you know how you make them, them Cosby sweaters, them Coogee sweaters, all them lines. He all up and through all them lines in the industry, man. This brother right here is into the movies now. He is not just making entertainment and showing his history and the history of music from the South, but he's also journeying into a whole nother venture too. We probably going to catch him on like Animal Planet or something. Without further ado, <laughs> let's go ahead and introduce Ian Burke in the building. What's up, my guy? What's up, man? Chilling, man. Chilling, 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 bro. It's, uh, I've, I've heard your name through different doors, different sectors, you know what I mean? Yes, Throughout sir. the industry. Yes, uh, I was signed with CSAC. I was with ASCAP at at the time, oh, I heard. yeah, I heard, I heard your name. My boy Cap told me he was like, "Man, did you ever meet Ian? You ever talk to Ian?" And I was like, "Nah, I ain't never talked to him." He was like, "All right, cool. We'll just come over here to see set." <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't like the death row speech. It nah, was yeah. it was a cool little transition. Yeah. But, but but man, it, it's it's amazing to have you in the building because you work with a lot of the artists that I've interviewed or or work with or seen or it's been to a concert and seen perform right. So for those that don't know, man, Ian Burke uh, definitely deserves one of the biggest intros ever. Uh, you work many major record labels. You work with almost every single artist to come through the South um, and, and the North, you know, and the, and the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you had it ASCAP for a while, and that's the home to almost every major artist, you know, uh, when, when it comes to them trying to get their just due or their performance rights or their licensing. or exactly. You were working those deals, yeah. you know what I mean? And then you, you go on and do your own thing and, and work in the industry. But, you know, you like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a middle seat. I'm going to take a middle seat. I'm going to work with all these artists and, you know, help them along the way in their journey. And now you're doing it in a different way where you're shining light on those who may not have got all of the accolades they should have got right. with your movie right here, uh, Song of the South. And then you also have another documentary we got to talk because it's, it's nominated. It's right. nominated, so we got to talk about it. Right. And that's that biggest intro ever. <laughs> Without further ado, Ian Burke in the building, man. What's good, bro? Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I saw you chopping it up with, with I, I, I like, I don't, I'm reluctant to say co worker because I, this is a guy I look up to, you know, mm -hmm. in the industry, Ryan Cameron, obviously. I know oh, y'all yeah. chopped it up. Oh, yeah. Uh, But it is still indeed a co worker. So it's good to see that you were making a move. Everybody can't sit in Ryan's seat. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ryan and I go back a long way. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And he was with me uh, almost since the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, yeah, we 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 kind of cool. We kind of cool. Yeah, I see that. I see that, <laughs> man. That's dope. Um, and hopefully after this interview, we'll be kind of cool too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm no, joking. No, no, maybe we will be. That's what I'm talking about. Oh uh, man, did you ever think when you were you coming into you know your own and you're touring with these bands and stuff like that? Did you ever think that you were gonna make this transition to do movies? No. Nah. Mm. No, I, I I didn't. You know, it was uh, it was like a COVID decision. One of those COVID <laughs> moments when you sitting at home, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got your puppy looking at you, and um, you you just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, the stars sort of just aligned. You know, mm -hmm. my brother, who um is uh, uh, eleven years older than me, former military. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also a scuba instructor. Okay. 
And um, okay. he wanted to, to he, he started an organization called JASIS, mm. Junior Scientists in the Sea, yeah. where he was teaching, you know, wayward teenagers how to scuba dive and ocean conservation and coral restoration and things of that nature. And he wanted to do something. He wanted to, to document his work mm -hmm. on, on film. So um, it started off as a docuseries. And then, um, you know, when when he brought it to me, because I, he was the scientist mm -hmm. in the family, I was in entertainment. Right. And, um, you know, so it was like, yo, I, I need your help with this. So, you know, we started working towards that. And then um, another gentleman named Rich Green, mm. you know, was asking me about, you know, have you ever thought about doing something on you and, mm -hmm. and your accomplishments? And I was like, nah, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, he and another gentleman named Dana Rivers talked me into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we got with a gentleman, uh, Chris Mullins and Joe Howell mm -hmm. to to put that situation together. So both situations came together in, in film and television for me uh at the same time in 2020 during COVID. So wow. it's just like, okay, well, maybe this is my next path. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and uh we started shooting both that year in 2020. Wow, let me hit the high bell for that. That's amazing. A lot of people during 2020 COVID were making different pivots, trying yeah. to figure it out. Some people sat on the couch, just collected those checks and then waited yeah. for, for the doors open back up. Some people was like, let me hit the ground to try something new. You want yeah, to absolutely. People? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was for me. It was mm -hmm. just, you know, um, let me try something new. I I even tried, you know, uh I started my own Instagram live thing called okay. quarantine live. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Trying to do what you do. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it was cool. You know, I just called up, you know, some of my celebrity friends and say, listen, yeah. I'm going live. You know, mm -hmm. you want, you want to join me? Yeah. And, um, you know, put some questions out there and, 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 uh, play some independent music, got independent artists mm -hmm. to send in their music. And, uh, you know, I, I would have, uh, producers rate their music or something yeah. like that so you know it's something different that's that's dope though i mean a lot of artists don't have that they, they're they not able to sit into a room with it with an ian burke right you know they can't get to that that corporate office to sit with you they also can't get with a jermaine dupree or this person or that person but you have those contacts and right you you open up those doors for artists man and that's amazing to do man because yeah. you could have just used the, all those for yourself yeah no nah, no doubt no doubt, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I'm, I'm, kind of, that, that's always been my nature in this business, just trying to, to help others, you know, fulfill their situations, mm -hmm. fulfill their dreams, fulfill their goals, um, and that's always been something that's been exciting for me, you mm -hmm. know, to, to be able to sit back and watch something that you had a hand in grow, mm -hmm. and and become what it's destined to become. You know, that's that's fulfilling for me. Yeah, man, that's, that's amazing, bro. I, I, I want to talk about, take a quick little step back and rewind, because obviously you have a, a label background, so, you know, with Ichiban and, and and the bigger labels and, and Electra and mm -hmm. all of those, but then you transition to ASCAP, and they, they're they supposed to work together, but, you right. know, that doesn't always, that's not always the case, because one is making sure the artists get out, make sure they get paid, and the other was like, I need to make sure the artists get paid, because we're in charge of that. Right. How was that transition for you moving from the label to the, you know, to licensing? It, you know what? It wasn't it wasn't easy because, you know, um, as a, you know, work, first work with label and then doing management. Like mm -hmm. I was um, I didn't know much about performance rights organization. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that there were three in this country, which was BMI, CSAC and uh, ASCAP. Mm -hmm. And um, but I didn't know much about them. Mm -hmm. So I, I would take my clients. I signed some clients over. To be in mind, mm -hmm. like when I was managing uh, Organized Noise, yeah, um, I had a relationship over there at BMI, and I signed them over to BMI, right? Um, but uh, as I, I continued to grow, I got a relationship over there with ASCAP. Mm -hmm. So I took Outcast while I was managing them. <laughs> right. I took them over to ASCAP, right? You know what I'm saying? So I, I really didn't know what the difference was. All I knew was that they collected. Royalties, mm -hmm. performance royalties. So right. that's it. They can get your artist money, and it exactly. made sense. Exactly. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, that residual income. Right. So, um, mailbox money. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, when I got the opportunity to work for ASCAP, I started learning a whole lot more about mm -hmm. the performance, ri royal performance rights organizations and the difference between them. Yeah. And um, that's when I, you know, really became pro. ASCAP, mm. or, you know what I'm saying? And um, uh, I started working towards, you know, 
getting folks involved with with the ASCAP movement. Mm-hmm. You know? Tell me about that. Like, what were some of the things that you learned? Like you say, you learn more. What were some things that you learned that makes sense if an artist is watching right now that they should know about performance rights or ASCAP itself? Well, um, ASCAP was the first performance rights organization. Mm-hmm. ASCAP was developed by songwriters and music publishers, mm-hmm. right? To um, to collect performance rights royalties for their clients. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they were the first to do it. And the the most important thing about that aspect is that their board of directors are other songwriters mm. and other music publishers, right? which are the same people that's going through their struggles. You know, if yeah. you're a songwriter, a producer, what have you, you know, you want someone that can relate to to what mm. it is that you do. They understand the journey. Exactly. Right. With um, BMI or Broadcast Music Incorporated, that actually speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. You know, they they came along and um, uh, while ASCAP was only dealing with a certain sector of music, I think uh-huh. that that's been our only fault. Like yeah. We didn't see the, the other possibilities, yeah. country, mm-hmm. rock and roll, um, R&B, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? BMI yeah. came in and they they looked after all of that stuff. We were only dealing with theater music or mm-hmm. theatrical music. Right. So yeah. so so for those who may not be familiar if you have a stadium or if you have a theater or somebody that's going to be using music to bring people in, they're supposed to make sure that the artist music that they're using get taken care of. Right. And, and that's what ASCAP was Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know when 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 you're in a, a venue Mm-hmm. Like you find out whether or not that venue is licensed by performance rights organizations. Right. So mm-hmm. whenever you play those venues, you're supposed to get a check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're publicly performing your music to entertain that club's audience. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and if a of, DJ is playing, and correct me if I'm exactly. wrong, no, if no, a DJ no. is playing your music, you're supposed to get compensated. Exactly. Or mm-hmm. if you're walking in a Kroger and you hear your music coming mm-hmm. through the radio, that's a public performance of your work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They have to pay out for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so... So uh, I was saying about BMI, mm-hmm. their board of directors are radio programmers mm-hmm. yeah. and, and radio owners. Those are the people that we're collecting from. Yeah. So who's more going to have your best interest your best at interest hand? At, right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? CSAC was a, a, a privately owned in the, you know, uh-huh. situation. You know, yeah. for the most part, back in the day, you had to be invited to become a part of CSAC. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, ASCAP was definitely the first. It's the only true nonprofit mm-hmm. organization, songwriting organization that's out there. Mm-hmm. And that's what made me so um, proactive. Got you. Towards uh, the whole ASCAP thing, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. Right, man. That's that's some history right there. I hope y'all was paying attention, especially right. those artists. Because like, some some of us want to jump into music but don't understand the, the business aspect of it. Right. And that's the part that can either hurt you or help you later on. Right. Right. Exactly. And I'm sure a lot of those artists are very happy that you, you know, brought them over to ASCAP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, you know, I had a lot of lot of folks, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, mm. uh Tricky Stewart. Right. His brother Laney Stewart, um, Dallas Austin, Jermaine mm-hmm. Dupree. Yeah. Uh, Shakespeare. I brought Shakespeare over from BMI mm-hmm. to uh, ASCAP. I switched him over. Yeah. Go to Don. <laughs> See, look, look at you scalping people. Yeah. Scalping uh, people. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Man, but you, you're talking about people that are like inside of the music, the fiber of the music, uh, especially when it comes to Atlanta music or South music and not just hip hop, R&B. It's like everything. Right. You know what I mean? And you're helping those people get those quote unquote publishing deals or, or licensing deals or royalty deals and helping them eat and feed their families for generations. Right. And mm. and let me tell you, man, that that performance rights money, you know, or when I was at ASCAP, I uh-huh. was able to take a peek uh-huh. at some <laughs> <checks, laughs> yeah. you know, I'll tell you, some of those folks was was making crazy money. Yeah. You know, crazy money. And it's money that, you know, they're making over the years. Like I said, yeah. you know, mailbox money, residual mm-hmm. income. Right. Um, you know, like I saw checks for three quarters of a million dollars going out per quarter. Per quarter. And you that's that saying? might be just for one song or right. one project right. that's generating that type of revenue because of because of the performance rights. Like you said, if it's playing in a club, it's licensed venues, right? If it's getting movies, yep. if it's Same playing licenses, on the radio. Yep, mm-hmm. ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, we collect for all of that, you know, um, of music and video games, mm-hmm. yep. and things of that nature. So yep. any t- anywhere your music is publicly performed, mm-hmm. 
we collect for that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. That makes so much sense. But you knowing all of this and then taking that information and say, okay, it's so many avenues for income in the entertainment industry. And now you're making visuals, mm -hmm. which most of these, of course, of course, there's one project is going to have music involved in it. Right. Like, you know where to go and where and how to get this thing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me how, like, learning from that, from your industry, uh, you know, make up, how that transition with the movie part? Well, you know, um, it was, for me, it was easy. Like, well, I, I don't want to say easy, but, because uh, I'm still learning mm -hmm. in the film and television. Mm -hmm. But what I did was I took what I learned from the music industry. Yeah. You know, and uh, and, and which was collecting the dots. And that that's mm -hmm. primarily my job. What you do, right. I connect the dots. Uh -huh. You know what I'm he saying? He makes music. They can cut you a check. Let right. me put y'all together. Right, exactly. He writes. He composes. Let me put y'all together. That's exactly what okay. I did. You know, mm -hmm. folks would, would call me and say, yo, can you connect me with such and such, such and such? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and if it was within my power, that's what I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? So a producer in films, you mm -hmm. know, does the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just connect the dots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We needed a, a camera person. We needed a, a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I call folks up. And because a lot of folks that were uh, in the business and, and came from Atlanta, knew yeah. my background in yeah. music. Right. They know you're know you're legitimate in the they space. Knew, exactly. Right. They knew that I was legitimate. So they were willing to to do things maybe for a little bit less than what they would normally charge. Right. Because they know... you. you Sometimes you'll take less money knowing that you're going to get more of your work. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so that's what I did. That's that's how I was able to uh, transcend or, or, or make the the, mm -hmm. the transition. Right. 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 Um, and yeah, the, you know, that's how it became. It worked so, out. Yeah, it worked, it worked, <laughs> it worked out. out. Yeah. So now, you know, we we, we have the aquatics uh -huh. that, that we did. My brother's project, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be a docuseries, became uh, a scripted TV show. Wow. Um, my partner, Dion Kubas. Uh, helped uh, helped fund the the next round. We we did two shoots with that. Yeah. Um. It's an episodic TV show. Okay. And um. You know we had a great cast uh, of young teenagers who my brother taught how to scuba dive. So, you wow. know, some of them we had to teach how to scuba dive. Yeah. Others already knew how to scuba dive. Mm -hmm. And we we shot this great show. And um. So far we we're we've done two film festivals. Mm. So far the yeah. um. Uh, Sunscreen Film Festival in, mm -hmm. in St. Petersburg, yeah, and the Bronze Lands Film Festival, yeah, here in Atlanta, and we're doing one more film festival, the Black Film Festival here mm -hmm. in Atlanta, yeah, uh, in October, um, at the Bronze Lands Film Festival, we were nominated, yeah, for Best Feature, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that that within itself, you know, is like validation. Yeah, I you mean, there's so many positive, good fibers in that. You're talking about you got teenagers that need a better way. They need to find out a different way to do things because right. they're gonna end up in trouble. Right. Some kind of trouble. Yes. You got your brother who has the experience and the knowledge to be able to teach it, and then you guys are, um, I want to say, I guess, relatable enough for them to be able to accept the information. Right. And then y'all are able to put this on paper and show the world, like, hey, you don't have to be a, you don't have to hoop, you don't have to rap, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. You can get in this water and make a living too. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, black people do swim. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, unlike what we see on Instagram at pool parties, we do get in the water. We, 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 get the water. we learned that in Alabama when the right. boy jumped in that water and swam right. to that dock. You know what I'm saying? Right. Black people swim. We swim. You know, and they, they scuba dive as well. Right, right, man. So that's amazing. And to be able to work with family, like you say, your, your yeah. brother, y'all 11 years apart, y'all could really, is this the first time y'all really got to connect in, the, in, a, in a work yes. sense? Yes, mm. it's the very, very first time, mm. um, which was amazing. Mm. You know, that is it is my my brother. Um, you know, uh, have you have you seen the movie Men of Honor? Yeah, uh huh. With Cuba Gooding, yeah, Rob De Niro. Yeah. Well, that character that Cuba played in that movie mm. was my brother's mentor. In oh the Navy. wow! Okay, you know what I'm saying okay. He was the first. Yeah. Uh, Navy salvage diver. Yeah. That that I forget his name. I forget the gentleman's name. But but Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character was uh -huh. the first. Yes. My brother was the eighth. Wow. In the world. That's the history, country. bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, so he's been able to, you know, solidify his position yeah. in history, as you said. Right. So, you know, and, and, and I've been able to do my thing. Mm -hmm. So for us to be able to, to, to put our heads together mm -hmm. and make it work. Right. 
It's a blessing. Right. Who would have thought a Marine scuba diver and a, a, a industry vet would come together to make a film like this? Exactly. And, and be brothers. That's a beautiful thing. That's a story within itself. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I smell we might a spin need to document off, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, tell me about the other film, Songs of the South. Um, I, I know I know. Um, you got pretty much your whole Rolodex in this thing, man. Well, yeah, you know, like like I said, a gentleman by the name of Rich Green came, brought it to me. Yeah. And um, I, I was a little reluctant. But I told him as long as I could do it my way, mm -hmm. you know, the way I, because, you know, I, I didn't want to do like one of these, these short things. Mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of my, I, my career had a lot of twists and turns. Right. But the, the important thing for me was, is not, it wasn't just about me. Mm -hmm. It was about the city of Atlanta and how we came to be uh, recognized yeah. as the musical Mecca, uh, 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 not just of the South, of yeah. the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, so, you know, I, I, I likened it to, and I, I'm no Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. but I likened it to The Last Dance. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because even though it was the, the, the documentary itself was about the last season right. of the Bulls. There was so many other and things. There was so many other are, yeah. aspects. And of course, Michael was to play a key figure. Right in that whole situation. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted the the film to 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 expand on the Atlanta music scene and mm -hmm. how the explosion happened. But there's so other many, a lot of different people, a lot of different characters mm -hmm. along the way right. that needed to be showcased. And of course, this is my view yeah. of how, because there's a million different stories. Right, there. Everybody right. has their own story of how they feel mm -hmm. the South had arrived right. or Atlanta had arrived. This is my story. Right. This is the way I saw it and how I perceived it to be and my involvement in it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So um, that was how I wanted the story to be told. Yeah. You were in the inside and able to get a, a bird's eye inside, but also get a bird's eye view looking in. Because you weren't actually the artist, but you were the person connecting the artist. Exactly. You were the person making managing and, and uh, no disrespect when I say this, babysitting these acts to make yep. sure they get to where they need to be. And then you were on the other side of, of it as well to make sure that people get checks and get this and get that. So right. it's a great perspective to be able to tell these stories. Man. Mm -hmm. yep. And because a lot of people think uh, the South jump off started at the Source Awards when Dre got yeah, on stage, right. but it, it was already bubbling before yeah, that. It's bubbling way before that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, back in the early 80s, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis got fired mm -hmm. from the time doing production here in Atlanta. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Working on the SOS yeah. and uh, the SOS band and, and things of that that nature, creating hit records for them. You know, um, we could go, and then, you know, James Brown and, yep. and, and others are from the South. Yeah, Lil Richie, a lot, of, lot of those acts. Yeah. Most of those acts, especially in the blues world, came from the South, so exactly. rock and roll too, so exactly. yeah. Exactly, so, you know, um, and uh, Jermaine, Mm -hmm. Really, in, in my eyes, Jermaine Dupree, you know, was one of the first with the hip hop act signed mm -hmm. to a major label back in 1988, 89. It was. Uh, yeah. With uh, Silk Times Leather, mm -hmm. you know, at the age of 15, 16 years old. Was he? I think he lied. JD was probably 11. <laughs> <laughs> JD was probably 11 years old with X. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So so that whole situation sort of kicked up. Then LA and Babyface, mm -hmm. you know, came to Atlanta with Jack the Rapper right. and, and loved it here and decided to plant their flag here. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it just started to jump off. Yes. Yeah. You know, and 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 this is my story. Uh, of of how I feel that whole situation took off. And I was involved. I was with Jermaine Dupri. Mm -hmm. I was with Dallas Austin. Mm -hmm. I was with Organized Noise. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was with these those, those three factions. The Mount Rushmore's of Atlanta production, exactly. the music coming exactly. out of the South, right? Exactly. Right, right. So, man, to be to be a, a fly on that wall, bro, and I, we appreciate you putting us in a position to be able to 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 see it right. and live it and learn it and, and hear it because that history, especially in it's so many artists and people that are in the entertainment industry here that want to pop off. You got to know that history, though. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, we appreciate you putting that project together. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to finish it, though. I, it still <laughs> needs to be finished. You know, I got uh, over 30 interviews mm -hmm. already shot. But, you know, I need to do um, post-production. And, and the way I wanted to do it was a, a miniseries. Like, mm -hmm. if I don't know if you recall the 
uh, Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iovine, yeah, uh-huh. uh huh, yeah, series the infamous. aftermath, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh huh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to do something like that, like a four part mini series, yeah. you know, that we, we put out and we cover different areas and different aspects of yeah. how the South became, yeah, the most influential, uh, uh mm-hmm. music in the uh, world, I, I, do it in the world. I, I get it, man. Look, I'm from Jersey, I moved down here, I was here young, mm-hmm. back and forth, but. I know for sure it's extremely influential. I went out of South Korea with a, with an artist and I was um performing, he was performing. And when I say they knew every single song, they did not speak any English. Right. They knew every song that came on that was from the South or basically from Atlanta. They knew every song. And I said, yeah, this is it. This yeah. is where it's at. So yeah. I definitely get what you're saying, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so man, y'all make sure that you guys uh stay in tune with in uh what what where can everybody follow you at on, on social? Everybody can follow me um on uh Instagram is at E N F Burke, I A N F B U R K E. Um definitely follow me there. You can uh I'm on Facebook as I think Ian Burke. Mm-hmm. And then on Twitter, um, Orca172. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, the killer whale. The big fish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, uh, I, I do want to ask you this. Um, what was one of those moments that you realized, and and being in it, it was probably a bunch of moments, one right. of those moments that stick out to you where you realize, like, wow, the South does have something to say. It's about to be on and popping out here oh, with the music. That's easy. That's easy. Mm. Um, at the I think it's 2003 mm-hmm. Grammys. Yeah. And um I was there uh when Outcast won album of the year. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was a pivotal moment. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Like I was just like, wow, this is unbelievable. Album of the year. No other at the Grammys. Done that. At the no Grammys. group has done that. And the, especially the, not in hip hop. It's right. hard for a hip hop artists to win a Grammy, period. Right. Album exactly. of the year. Album yeah. of the year. <laughs> And that's when I was like, okay, like, you know, we had already arrived, but that solidified in my mind is like, yo, the South really does have something to say. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we said it in volumes and not just in hip hop, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what I want to make sure the world understands. Like we dominated in R and B too. Mm-hmm. Tony Braxton, Usher, mm-hmm. you know what TLC. I'm saying? TLC. TLC. Uh-huh. Sierra. Yep. Uh Kerry Hilson, mm-hmm. Jagged Edge, yep. 112. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This ju- and this is just Georgia acts. Yeah. You talking about Beyonce from Texas, the South. But she still she still made her bones here. She can't right, that's what I'm saying. stop here in Atlanta. Right. Chris Brown, Virginia, the South. Right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we up. we 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 you know, we 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 did our thing. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And and I'm I'm proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. That's what's up, man. Ian Burke in the building, man. We appreciate you pulling up on us, oh, man. For sure. Chopping it up. We we can't wait to see that movie. Uh well the the series. We right, can't wait right, to see right. it. Right. You're not gonna be doing it for it's gonna have to be about six. <laughs> Uh, four is not going to be enough. <laughs> I had a long line. So, nah, you're going to have to cut that now. <laughs> cut that. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. That's what's up, man. And make sure that you guys check out the, the series with you and your brother, too, man. It's just winning. Yes. The Aquatics is winning all types of awards and it's changing lives, too. And you can see it firsthand, man. We appreciate what you're doing for the industry. Appreciate what you're doing just as a person, man. Your boy Reese up out of here. Once again, we appreciate you guys for checking us out tuning in to on the radio side. We are gone. Please. Time to see who's with Reese. Right. Whoa. Yeah. Wendy Williams is in here. How you doing? You know who is the top five dead or alive? D-Block General Jada Kiss right now with my cousin Big Reese, baby. Check it out, y'all, what it looked like and shit.